Hello and welcome guys, my name is Steve and welcome back to my channel, welcome back to the Concurrency in Go course. This is the part two of our topic, which is weight groups. And yet again, if you haven't watched the first part of this topic, make sure to check out this video right here. Like in the previous video, at the end of each video, I'm gonna provide you with a zip archive so you don't have to write all the code by hand, so you can just download that. That's why I head over to that GitHub repository and download the zip archive so that you don't have to write everything by hand so that you can follow along as we progress in this video. And in part two of this topic, we're gonna learn a little bit more about weight groups, a little bit more complex examples when it comes to weight groups, a couple of problems which weight groups solve. And now without too much further ado, without wasting extra time, let's dive into this video. Another very practical use case of weight groups is rate limiting. So let's imagine you have your application, your server, and your application has a capacity of five. Let's say you pulled five records from the database, you wanna throw all those five records at a time. Because you wanna stay efficient, you wanna make use of all the resources that you got, right? Let's also say the external API will only be able to receive a maximum capacity of three requests. The fourth request, while those three requests are still processing is going to be denied. In this case, we can throw in five requests at a time because we're gonna get two of them denied, which is not right, which means we're gonna lose two requests. So in this case, we need to implement some kind of batching on our side so that we comply with the rate limiting. And this batching is very easily done using a weight group. So using a weight group, we can limit this, we can rate limit our number of requests or our number of go routines. We're gonna group those requests in very small chunks and very small batches and throw them as batches and once the batch is done we can throw in the next batch and so on and so forth. So that being said, that being explained, let's have a look at a couple of examples which demonstrate rate limiting using weight groups. So I'm going to create another directory called limit go routines. So let's say directory uh, limit go routines and inside this one as usual create a file main, uh, package main, func main. So before this main declaration I'm going to simply create a type called request and let's make this a dummy function. After that, let's go ahead and create a map of uh, integer to request. Why a map and not a slice? Because we want this to be kind of random so that when we range over this map, it's going to throw these requests randomly as it would happen in a real world. So let's say uh, requests is going to be a map of integer to request. Let's create a for loop, let's say for i from zero till 100, for example, let's say I plus plus, and inside of this one, first of all, let's go ahead and create a function which will capture the value from the iteration and then use that value later on when this request gets to be executed. So let's say F is going to be a function. So let's say it's going to return a request and let's say return func. So let's say we receive some kind of ID. It's going to be integer. It's going to be basically the iteration number. And then let's print something like, uh, uh, let's say uh, request and print this ID that we receive here. Another simple thing, let's push this function onto the map. So let's say requests of I is going to be equal to this F and because this returns a function, this returns a request, which is exactly what we need. Let's simply call uh, I, which will capture this value. Now in order to limit the amount of go routines, the amount of simulated requests that will get executed, I will need some kind of rate limiting. I will need to throttle the amount of requests which uh, get Gets thrown. So let's first of all start by creating a weight group. So let's simply say var, let's say weight group is going to be to sync weight group and let's also create a variable which uh, will indicate how many uh, maximum requests we can throw. Let's say max is going to be equal to 10. We want a batch of 10 requests maximum. And let's start with the outer loop which will basically range over the map of requests which we created. So let's say for i is going to start from zero, i is going to um, go up to length of requests for example and let's say i plus equals to max so the inner loop is going to be for j equals to i it's going to start from i then uh, j is going to be smaller than uh, i plus max and then let's say j plus plus so doing it this way we're basically going to throw 10 requests then another batch of 10 requests then another batch of 10 requests and we're basically going to continue from the uh, previous batch and now all that's left to do is call add, done, and wait. Let's go ahead and first of all call wait. So uh, inside this outer loop, let's go ahead and say wait group dot wait. And after the wait uh, uh, statement has executed, let's print something like font print line. Let's say max 
Uh, let's say requests processed. And inside the inner loop, let's go ahead and call add and then call done once the coroutine has finished. So let's simply say wake group add and let's call one and let's say go funk. And inside this go funk, let's say defer wait group dot done. So inside this anonymous function, I'm going to simply pass in, let's say uh, requests of, uh, let's say J and let's receive the request here. Let's say it's going to be a request and then let's go ahead and call this request. So I'm gonna start from one right here and I'm gonna go up to 100 and 100 and let's provide in J plus one right here. So let's run this example. And as you can see, it runs 10 requests, then uh, runs another 10 requests and so on and so forth till it processes all the requests. Now, this was a very simple example where we simulated requests using simple functions. Then we get to execute those functions using a wait group. Now let's go ahead and create a more complex example, which uses a TCP server, a real TCP server, which uh, does rate limiting internally and uh, throws away the rest of the request which uh, don't comply with the rate limiting. And also let's create the same batching approach uh, on our client side. So again, let's create another directory for our example. I'm gonna call it rate limiting. So let's say rate uh, limiting. And as usual, let's create a file called main and I'm gonna create another file called server. So uh, both of these are going to be part of the main package. And this one is also going to be part of the main package. Again, func main and this one will also be func main. And I'll start with the server first in order to implement rate limiting, then I'm going to use the same exact approach on our client side. So to create a TCP server is very simple. Inside the main, let's say something like li and er, and let's say net.listen and network is going to be TCP of course, and the address is going to be something like 8080. So this is the way we create a TCP server. Now let's go ahead and handle the error first. So if er not nil, we're going to simply say log.fatal let's say uh, could not create a listener and let's provide in the error in case we do have a valid listener let's go ahead and start listening for connection so let's say four and inside this infinite for loop let's go ahead and listen for connections so i'm going to say again connection and an error and we're going to say listener dot accept and as usual let's go ahead and handle the error so if error not nil we're simply going to continue because we want to serve other connections now we want to keep track of how many connections we got this is why let's go ahead and create a variable which is going to hold the counter of uh, how many connections we got so let's say of our connections and I'm gonna make this an int 32. So after we successfully accepted the connection, I'm gonna say connections plus plus, which will increment the connections count. And then after we incremented the connections count, let's go ahead and run our uh, connection inside its own go routine so that we don't block other connections from being accepted. So let's say go funk and this is where we serve connections. Now, before our connection is closed, we want to execute a defer function. We wanna say something like defer func. So this is basically the place where we're gonna close the connection and we're going to decrement uh, the connections count. So I wanna say something like con.close and I wanna ignore this one because it's usually successful. And I wanna say something like atomic and I know this is something new, but I promise we're gonna cover atomics very soon. So atomic dot add in 32, I'm gonna provide the address of this uh, connections variable and I'm gonna say minus one. So this is basically uh, here because uh, we can accept multiple uh, connections at the same time and we don't want to have any kind of race conditions. We're gonna dive into race conditions. Don't worry about that too much. So in our case, uh, the rate limiting is fairly simple. We're simply gonna check if the connection count is bigger than three, for example. And if it's bigger than three, we're simply gonna return causing that defer uh, to execute, which will close the connection and will decrement the connection count. So after this uh, defer statement, let's say something like if atomic again, load in 32, let's pass in the address connections. It's bigger than three, for example, let's simply return. And now let's go ahead and simulate some heavy work by simply time slipping. And then after that, write something back to the connection. So let's simply say time.sleep, let's say time.second. So I'm gonna say something like connection.write and we need to write back a slice of bytes. So I'm gonna say slice of byte and let's say success, for example. And as you can see, this one returns back and then an error. I don't really care about the N, I only care about the error. And not to waste a lot of time, I will copy this if statement 
create one right here and let's do it like that and let's say could not uh, right to connection. And this is pretty much it on our server side. Now let's get back to our client side where we have to implement the exact same batching approach so that we limit the amount of connections, the amount of requests we make to the server. First of all, let's go ahead and create a couple of variables to store the total and the maximum number of requests. So inside the main function, I'm gonna say total and max will be equal to 10 and three. So let's go ahead and create the first four loops. So let's say uh, for I will be equal to zero and I will go up to total and let's say I plus equals to let's say max and inside this for loop let's go ahead and say weight group that weight uh, right after uh, the declaration of these two variables. So let's say var weight group is going to be sync dot weight group. So let's say limit will be equal to max. If uh, let's say i plus max is greater than total, limit is going to be equal to total minus i. So I'm gonna say something like four j equals to zero. J is gonna go up to limit and let's say uh, j plus plus. So let's say go funk. So before this inner loop, let's go ahead and call the add method. So I'm gonna say await group that add and I'm gonna simply call it with limit. Inside this uh, go funk, let's say uh, defer weight group dot uh, done. And let's also go ahead and pass the iteration number inside the, this uh, go func. So let's say J. First of all, dial that TCP server we just created. So let's say net dot dial and let's say network is going to be TCP and the address is going to be 8080 as we specified in our server. And as you can see, this is going to return back a connection and an error. So let's say connection and error. And let's also handle the error as usual. If error not, uh, nail let's say log dot fatal f and let's say a uh, could not dial and providing the original error percent v error and also keep in mind this done method is supposed to be called first this is why let's place this over here so now that we have a valid connection all that we have to do is read the entire string so i'm going to simply say io util let's say read all and pass in the connection and as you can see we get back a slice of byte and an error so let's say slice of bytes and error and as usual let's handle the error so i'm gonna say something like could not uh read from connection so let's add another if statement and let's say if for example string of bs is not equal to let's say success we need to return an error right here so i'm gonna copy a statement from this one let's say log.fatal for example request error request i plus one plus j which is going to give us back the exact id from the request and if the connection string is equal to success let's go ahead and print out some success message so let's say something like font let's say print and let's say a request and let's pass in the id and let's say success and let's also print a new line and let's provide in the id which is going to be the exact same i plus one plus j so i'm going to open up a new terminal and see CD into rate limiting and run the server first, then run our client to see if that works. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal and let's CD into rate limiting and let's go run server.go first of all and let's open up a new terminal and again cd into rate limiting and let's say go run main.go and as you can see it's processing free requests then another free request and another free request then one request so as you can see this type of batching works so if you run this again as you can see free requests another free another free another free and then one request at the end this was a much more complex example using weight groups to prove that rate limiting is beautifully achieved through weight groups keep this in mind and hopefully this is a very useful example for your future projects all right because this video is kind of getting way out of hand let's wrap it up and see each other in part three of this topic peace